Camtasia 2022 is here. In this video, I want to show you some of the major improvements it got. And there are two things that I'm especially happy about. But let's start from the beginning. The first thing that got a visual update is the home window. From here, you can start a new project or wrap up an existing one. Now, what's completely changed here is this new recording options. You have an arrow to click on the side, and then you get to decide if you want to start your recording in Camtasia, a new Audiate recording, or a Snagit image capture. Audiate is a separate paid service, but you get to try it for free for a few days, so you can test it out, and I'm going to cover it in a bit more detail later on, so make sure you check that out to see if it's for you or not. Snagit has been a part of TechSmith for a while. It's been a separate tool, but you can access it now from here as well. Down here, you get to see your recent projects and some templates that are available for you. Take your time, take a look at some of these, because aside from these being templates, they are mini projects that you can learn from. Now let's talk about one of the major updates in Camtasia 2022, which is a brand new library that's stocked with over 1000 assets. So no matter what video you're making, you're going to be sure to find related assets in here. So you can see everything is organized by category and inside the categories, you have a lot of different options. Here's an example of a fully adjustable animated callout. You also get 33 new title templates like this one. You can customize the text, obviously, to fit your tutorial. Now, just to give you an idea on how some of these work, let's test some of them out. Let's go to cursor animations and notice we have a lot of different options. Arrow double click, single click, hand close, and so on. If I open one of these, let's go with arrow single click, we get a different category for Mac and Windows because the mouse icon looks different on a Mac than on a window. Now, there are so many different effects you can choose from. Here's a very dramatic one. So let's go and see how this looks. I'm just going to click and drag this on my timeline. It's giving me a message about the frame rate. I want to keep the project at 30 frames per second. So I'm just going to go and continue. On my timeline, I already have a screencast. If I push this away, notice the mouse here didn't get captured properly. And I really want to emphasize that the people should click on this icon. So I'm going to put this on top here, but obviously I want it to be on this side and I don't need it to be so dramatically huge. So let's scale this down and place it here. Now let's just play this to see how it looks. That makes it really obvious what part people should click on. Let's do another example. This time we're going to take a look at setting up a device frame. So if you scroll down and go to UI kit, let's open that up. We get devices and here we can choose from different types of devices. I'm going to just select the first one for the laptop and drag it down here. On the side here under properties, I get a lot of different options for setting the color and this is just a placeholder for my image or my track. I'm going to right click on it to import my file, then select the file that I want and click on open. It's going to automatically place it on top of this device frame. Now, obviously you might need to adjust the length of this as you see fit. So I'm just going to open this up. This is the media that I added. I can drag this so that it's as long as I want or I can drag the entire grouped object to get everything to be the length that I need. Now, aside from devices, you have many different cool UI kits you can use. Here's an example of my favorite one. You might be wondering how to set this up. Well, it's super easy to do, so let's quickly do it together. I've just added a green board to my timeline. I'm going to go to library, scroll down to get to UI kit, if you scroll down a bit more, you're going to see the notification box. I'm going to go with dark, just click it and drag it and put it on top of my timeline. I want this to be the same size as the board. So let's make the adjustment here. Under properties, we get to adjust the text. I'm just going to leave that as messages. Let's change this to my name and let's also update this message as well. I'm just going to leave the time as now. Let's click and drag this up so that it shows up on top. But right now there is no effect. I want it to slide in and out. So I'm going to go to behaviors 
Go to sliding, click and drag and drop it on this notification box. Now the default of sliding is that it comes in from the side. I want to adjust that. So let's go back to properties. For in, I want it to come from the top. For during, I don't need any special animation here. So I'm going to go with none. And for out, it should also go out from the top. So this is how it looks. The message comes on, then the message goes out. Now here's a tip for pros. If you want to make this even more cooler, you can add motion blur to this. Go to visual effects, scroll down to get to motion blur, click and drop it here. And this gives you a nice blurry motion effect like this one. With Camtasia 2022, you get to add animated mouse movements to anything you want, even still images. So here, for example, I have a PNG. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. There is no mouse icon on this, but what I want to do is to add a mouse icon that points to get data up here and goes all the way down to the web. We can do that with cursor effects. Let me just make this one a bit bigger so we can see everything better. Now we're going to jump over to cursor effects. Up here, you see cursor path. That's what we need. We're going to click and drag and drop this on our timeline. By default, it already added something. It added a mouse icon and it added this path. Now this line is not visible. When I play this, this is how it's going to look. Now we want something similar, but we want the path to start from here and end down here. To adjust this, click on the effect down here. Now it's activated and notice we see there is a point at the beginning and at the end. These are the yellow points that we see on the ends of these lines. So we can click and just drag this up here. So I want the first point to be under get data. And for the second one, I'm just going to click and click again so I can just move the end and the second one to be here. Now you have the ability to adjust this as you want. Let's say if I go like this and I press play, this is how it's going to look. Now I don't want this to be so curved and so weird. So let's see the other options that we have. If we select this under properties, we can adjust the line type. We could make this straight. And then if I play this, that's how it's going to be. Now, if you want it a bit more natural, you can click anywhere inside. So notice I'm on the timeline in the middle. I see this icon that I click on and I can adjust it as I need. I can also just go here directly on the cursor path, right mouse click and add a cursor point and adjust this as I need. Now, if I click to the side and select everything, I can change the entire path to become more curved. So if I click on play, that's how it's going to be. Now, this is not really that natural, but it's probably my natural way of moving down here. You also have the options of how you want the cursor to ease. So you have ease both in, out, and none. Some of these make the movement a bit more natural. So just play around and see what works for you. In addition to this, you have the ability to make the icon a lot bigger. So notice the scaling is a 225, but you can go as big as you want. And the great thing is it doesn't get pixelated because it's using a high vector graphic. So when I press play, this is how it's going to look. All of these cursor effects work with screencasts as well. So here I have a screencast recording with all of my crazy mouse movements, and I want to optimize these movements. I'm just going to right mouse click on my media and edit the cursor path. I get the ability to either simplify the existing path or create a brand new one. I'm just going to go and simplify the existing one and click on continue. Now I can see the cursor paths all added here. I get the ability to adjust these as I want, to delete points, to delete entire cursor paths, just select them and press the delete button and optimize these movements as I need. You can see all my crazy mouse movements up here. Optimizing these allows my audience to have a better experience and avoid them from getting unintentionally hypnotized. With blend mode, you get to create cinematic effects and really unforgettable tutorials. Here I have a footage of a mysterious forest and I want to make it even more mysterious by adding some smoke to it. So I have smoke recorded separately, but it has a black background. How can I mix these two together to get the effect that I have in my head? Well, let's try it out. If I drag and drop my forest footage here, 
this is how the forest footage looks. If I grab smoke and put it on top of it, this is what I get. Because my smoke footage has a black background, it's blocking my forest footage. I want to blend these two together. So I'm going to go to visual effects, go to blend mode, click and drag and drop it onto my smoke media. Now automatically I get these blended together. I can adjust the type of blending I get by going to properties and adjusting some of the settings in blend mode. So under mode here, I have screen, but you have so many different options. And as you hover over it, you can see these in the preview. So I'm going to go all the way down and select Silhouette Luma. I think this is the best option here to get this mysterious effect. Now, notice you can also use Invert. This switches us from being mysterious to more of a horror movie. You can adjust the intensity here. And if you have more colorful images, you can play around with the different range options you have down here. You can use blend mode on any type of footage. It can be still images, any type of B-rolls or screencasts as well. Camtasia 2022 and Audiate give you the quickest way to your produced video. With Audiate, you get to improve audio quality, but you also get to do quick editing. It's kind of like an indirect self-service way of editing, which can be great for beginners. So let me show you an example. Here I have a part of my screencast. I'm just going to right mouse click on the track and edit this in Audiate. It's going to start transcribing the audio. So basically you get the written version of everything that you said. We can just quickly play this to see how it works. Now what if the regional director wants multiple levels of sorting? Well, now what if, so in general, it picked up the words okay, here it made a mistake. Instead of once, it should be once. If I want to correct this, I can just select the word, right mouse click, and I might already see it here. If not, I can create my own custom word. In this case, it should be once. Now I paused here. So these three dots, they represent pauses. These ones represent hesitations. So you might say like M, um, and so on. You can spot these with this pink dot. Now, if you want to delete these pauses or delete entire sentences, you can just select this and press delete. To silence a word, you select it and you click on this icon and it's silenced. So now if we listen to this, the director wants more, it skips that word. To delete the word, you just click the X icon or you can use backspace on your keyboard. Now you can see I have a bunch of pauses here, so I'm just going to delete those and let's just delete this part as well and this last pause. Before we export this, let me also show you some of the audio adjustments that you can do here. So if you click on this waveform icon or if you click on this one down here, you get to see the waveforms in a lot more detail. So you can do a lot of close cut editing. To enhance your audio quality, you can click on properties here and here you get to add audio effects. So you can remove noise, adjust the equalizer, or improve the de -esser. Once you're done, export your audio. I'm going to export to Camtasia. Now here's the cool part. You can edit the Camtasia timeline. This is automatically going to keep your entire timeline in sync. Because remember, we have a screencast and we have the audio. They have to be in sync. Or you can edit the media only. In this case, I'm going to edit the Camtasia timeline and click on export. We have to save the audio file separately. Obviously, you're going to be saving this in the same folder where all your other assets are as well. Now it's exporting the updated version of this back to Camtasia. And this is how our edited version looks like. We can see the cuts here on our screencast. So if we play this brackets and type in the column IDs, so one column. Notice everything is in sync. Now, Audiate is not something that we're going to be using because we have other programs that manage our audio. But if you're starting with editing, you might find this approach easier. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, aside from these new additions, there are about 30 new transitions that were added to. Now, we don't really use transitions in our videos, but if it's something that you use, you're going to have a good selection to choose from now. We're super excited about the animated cursor effect and blend mode. 
Let me know what you think and if you're already using Camtasia, which of these improvements you're looking forward to most. Comment below, let me know. As usual, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. And I'm going to see you in the next video.